Ah. Yo, we talking about groceries on FBA. Ah. Yo, easy. Yeah. J to the O, the Mayos. Groceries on FBA. What you know about that? All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, we're here with Michael Goldberg today, and uh, we're going to go over his new tool, ASIN Packer. Uh, I know this is one of the most requested uh, type of tools since Amazon announced that uh, you're going to have to uh, be required to uh, upload packing lists now, um, you know, especially in the grocery category with expiration dates. Uh, I know it's been a... Um, you know, a big nightmare for a lot of people who, you know, were required to do it a little early. Uh, everybody doesn't have to do it, but, uh, you know, if you're here and you don't, uh, you can expect to uh, be forced to upload those very soon, and it's, it's really not a lot of fun. I mean, we were spending uh, quite a few hours doing it, uh, you know, when we were required, uh, you know, only a couple weeks ago. Um, so, uh, Michael, why don't you tell us about, uh, you know, the tool and how it works and um, why everybody needs it. Sure, thanks. Um, so, uh, so um, me and Brendan Sullivan developed this tool together. We, I was working on a software project with him, and um, I was doing uh, the pack list during Q4, and it was just so so painful to do them. You know, it literally took me a good half hour to an hour to do a pack list. And, uh, you know, this is during Q4 when I should have been – that hour probably cost me, like, hundreds if not thousands of dollars. I could have been out shopping. And, you know, to, to do the pack list, you had to – you have to download it, – it's a very counterintuitive process from Amazon because – Amazon, you need the box sizes and weights to download the pack list, but you can't get the box sizes and, and weights until um, until after you pack the box. So it's like this whole catch-22. So what you had to do is you have to download the SKU list in, this, in the tab-deliminated text file, pop it into Excel, format it so it prints. Then you got to print it out, and what you get is like four or five pages, and you're holding these four or five pages um, – you know, as you're packing your box, you got one hand, you're, you're throwing the stuff in, you're crumpling up the paper, and then you're, you're recording like, oh, I got two items here, three there. And it's just like this, just, it was so mind numbing. And so after you pack everything up and you got all this paper and you're written everything down and then you go back to your computer and you have to like transfer all of that back into the computer accurately, and then you do the upload. And there just had to be a better way. So, you know, Brendan, who, who runs the Prime Zero Prep, warehouse who specializes in all this packing and shipping we got together and we said let's just like create something that will really help the sellers and um you know with our software you can create a pack list in like a minute or two like like actual minute or two of time because what you do is you pick up the what um what our software does is it downloads Sorry. Uh, what our software does is it downloads your entire uh, shipping contents into our app. So you don't have to scan each item as it goes in. You have a list of all your items and you can look at it by a list view or a thumbnail view. So you can actually see the pictures. And our app allows you to sort everything by size, weight, UPC, or title. And there's a search functionality as well in case you need to you know, search specific items that you can't find. And this enables you to really uh, pack, do your pack list so much faster. Um, our software also has color coding features specifically. Like, um, so I'm sorry. So it's set up like if you need an expiration date, you're, our software will have a giant red line around your item. So you know you have to put the expiration date in. If it needs preparation, there is a blue, giant blue line around your software. And if there's a combination, if it needs preparation or expiration, then it becomes purple. You know, red and blue make purple. So it's, I want you know, I'm a seller too. So I wanted to really try and create something that would save so much time and energy and make it so effortless. And, and really like, and when I'm not, I'm not really kidding when it says two to three minutes for a pack list because you, you pack in an item and you just literally go on your phone, push a button, you know, 
which is like your item and you tap in like five quantity and then you're done. It literally takes like three seconds to put that item in the box. And when everything's done, you just hit submit and it goes right into our web server. And our web server um, then enables you to download the QR codes if you don't want to do the pack list or you can download the pack list. It gives you either option. And, you know, again, our, our server saves all the information too so you know which items are in which boxes in case there's a reconciliation error later with Amazon. And it shows the UPCs, the expirations, and that's really the gist of what our software does. Oops, sorry, I was muted. Um, great. So uh, can you show us a demo of how it works? Um, yeah, let me figure out how to screen share on this. Uh, uh, the green the bottom. Bottom button on the bottom says screen share. The green green at the very Control side. the bottom of your window. Yeah, I got it. There we go. Okay. okay. Um, so like right now, I'm just working in, um, let me see, because I'm just doing the demos. Where is the pack list? Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so let's oops, hang on, sorry about that. Let's get this over here. Okay, so inside the software, you'll log in and this is what you'll see. You'll see all working shipments. And um, the first time you do this, you're gonna see a lot of shipments because what happens is, is you have a typically like, depending on your size, you're gonna have a lot of shipments that you never actually completed at any point. You know, maybe you didn't send it in or didn't hit complete. It will show up here. You're gonna have to go in and clean those out because there's just no way around it. But um, typically the newer shipments are on the bottom. So like after you click on your shipment, uh, oh, let me turn the audio. Um, so after you click on your shipment, you're going to get something like this where it says your shipment ID, the total units, and you're going to click to add a box. And I just want to mute the audio. Okay. Um, after you click on the box, you can see uh, it starts out in list view. So it's going to show you a list of all your products that are in there and you could scroll through them. Yeah. And I'm just, now what I was telling you before about having uh, outlines. So like the Xylachu gum has, uh, needs an expiration. So it's going to be in a red outline. This Graham Webb uh, shampoo uh, needs polybagging. So it's blue. And all you have to do is you tap on the add expiration and you know this window will pop up and that will allow you to add the expiration. Once you do that, you'll see that it no longer becomes red. You know, it goes away. So you know you don't have to do it anymore. And then, so we also, this is the thumbnail view. So if you click on this little icon here, it'll change it from thumbnail to list view. And, and again, it'll keep the same color. So if it needs polybagging, you'll see that blue outline. Um, it also keeps a total unit count, and it's it's a running unit count. So if you add all 15 units, it'll it'll only show you how many units are left that need to be added. Um, let's see, let's see what's going on. So when you click on the thumbnail or in the list view, you'll get a pop up, which will show you the picture. It'll have the UPC if it needs preparation. It'll show you the FNSKU as well, which is very helpful because a lot of sellers aren't commingled or you have to label it. And once you label it, you're over the UPC. So you need, you know, a way to identify the item. And you can hit click on the plus or minus to add or subtract the units from the box. Or you could just type in, you know, if you click on the zero, you could key in like the quantity. So I hit 15, I hit okay. Um, so you could see here too, is once the total quantity gets added into the box, it becomes grayed out at like a 50% opacity. This way you know which items are left to pack and which aren't. Um, where's my audio? Let's mute that too. 
So um, what else is next on here? Um, if you click on where it says box one up here in the corner, it'll bring up a pop-up, you know, so you can put your length, width, and uh, height in. Okay. Now, um, Michael? Yeah. Uh, now, I know you have a, a mobile app for iOS and Android, but uh, are they required? Can you do this part on a computer, or do you have to do it uh, in your mobile app? Uh Right now it's mobile, but if there's enough of a desire to do it not on the mobile, I mean, we could easily create a web form, you know. The, my only concern is this, is if you're going to do this with the web form, you might as well just fill out the pack list. You know, the, the benefit of the mobile app is that, like, you're, you're, you're entering it as you're packing, unless you have, like, a second person on a computer doing this. You know, because, I mean, if you're going to do it on the computer technically, you could just probably throw up that pack list into Excel and enter it. Right. I, I don't know how efficient it would be. Um, right now, like, you can't – right now, the, the – the, um, everything on the server is pretty much static. But, like, you can continually change and upload things from the mobile app. And everything takes about a second to upload. So there's no real lag on it. Great. Now, uh, Elizabeth Swan, uh, this is a question I can answer, but uh, Elizabeth asked, how, how can you handle an item when you have multiple expiration dates? Um, and the answer to that is that uh, you shouldn't be sending in items that have multiple expiration dates uh, because uh, Amazon's rules state that uh, you can only have one expiration date uh, per ASIN. So if you have multiple expiration dates, you need to send them in on your next shipment. Or... I mean, the, the other potential answer to that is, like, if you're doing a bundle with, like, a bunch of different candies and they all have different, you'll, you always have to go with the closest expiration date. You don't, you don't have a choice because... Right. Um, Multi-packs, bundles, you can uh, mix expiration dates, but then it's only going to go with the closest one. Correct. Um, okay, so uh, any more questions? Or you want me to continue? Yeah, there's a couple of them, but... Sure, yeah, I, I could answer. I mean, I did. let me get that chat up so I didn't even see. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, Barry um, is asking, uh, is this done in place of putting the shipment information that I would use on Seller Central? Um, so it does have the box information here. Is it going to fill that in at some other point uh, for you on Seller Central? No, a Amazon does not let you touch that page with an, any software. You cannot get into, like, I don't care what you do, you, they will not, through the API or whatever, they will not let you, conf um, like, create that shipment. That one page right there is, but we, we set this up, so I'll show you later on, is what's going to happen is if you go, when you go into our web server, you will see all the details, and you, you could run two pages side by side, so it takes, <clears throat> like, a second to just copy the information in. So it's just giving you that, you can fill it in when you're packing the box, and then you'll just have that information ready when you're ready to ship. Yeah, you have to record it somewhere. Um, I mean, right. you, you, you could write it on a piece of paper if you wanted, but, you know, again, we're trying to, you, you know, these pack lists, there's no easy way around it. You know, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. There, Amazon, like, kind of makes you jump through hoops to do it, and we're just – you know, there's no like right or wrong way. If you're more comfortable writing some of the stuff down in paper and transferring it over to Seller Central later, then, you know, by all means, you know, if that saves you time, then go for it. At some point, Michael, when you um when you're finished going through these step by step stuff, can you go back to your um like the list view that you were in before? I just want to see what all info it provides like for that label. Um, oh, yeah, sure. You don't have to do it right at this second. You can do it whenever it's more convenient, but... Um, no, I could do it now. It's no big deal. Um, I just wanted to see what it's... Yeah, right here. So, right right now, it shows the... Oh, um, let me take a step back. This information is provided when you upload the pack list from Amazon, which I can go over in a little bit. If you don't upload that pack list from Amazon, all you're going to get is your SKU because... Okay. Um, because you can't, Amazon prevents you from doing a reverse UPC search. You know, like if you're in any software and you want to list something, you could put the UPC in and it'll give you the ASIN, but you can't do that in reverse. So the only way to get that U UPC, the FNSKU, the polybagging, the expiration is to download um, the, the, the pack list inside Seller Central, which is, I mean, it only takes like a second or two. Now, right. I mean, 
if you have a shipment where you don't like need expirations and you know you don't need polybagging, like if you were doing all shoes or clothing, you can you don't need to download it and you could do you could use our software just to create QR codes. Okay. But personally I find the pack list to be much faster and cheaper. Because even if you have three or four boxes, that means you have to download the QR code you have to you know print them out peel them off stick them on each box right whereas the pack list you literally download it and upload it and you're done so okay cool thanks oh no problem um so i think we were so yeah we were in like the box section this is where you enter everything um, and then when you're done, you just hit this back button up here and that'll bring you back into the shipment window. And then you can see that the sizes are all in here, the weights in here, and you click the, literally the add new box button and you do it again. Um, this is the sorting window, which is that little barcode. So you could sort your products by SKU, uh, title, size, weight, UPC. And um, what I found is very helpful is, again, it depends what you're shipping. You know, if you're, if you're shipping all similar items, the thumbnails are good because you can kind of differentiate them. But like as far as sorting them by weight, that's not really going to help you if they're all like an, within like a few ounces of each other. Um, but I found like typically going by thumbnail and weight is, is a very quick way of, of packing a box because that way you have all your heavy items up top and you know you're packing all of them first and you don't have to worry about them too much you know crushing or getting damaged uh right so uh you know we're getting a lot of questions in the chat uh but i don't think uh people are understanding exactly what this tool does uh, this tool is only to create your packing list so and qr codes so right. you can or, or qr or the qr code you either need a packing list or you can put a qr code on the box um, but, uh, you know, it's not for listing, you know, and it, it wouldn't integrate with scan power because it's only to create the packing list. Scan power doesn't create the packing list. Create, uh, scan power is going to list the item, uh, and send them to Amazon. So we're going to pull the information from Amazon. Um, and I think the other main question was, uh, is Amazon going to require the packing list if a shipment, uh, is only one box? And at this point, they're not because everything will be in one box. They want to know what was supposed to be in each individual box. And that's why they're doing uh, this requirement right now. Yeah, if you're doing one box, um, there's an option that says all my shipments are in one, all my products are in one box. And you just put the size and the weight and any expirations inside, you know, the web file. I mean, you can, you can use our software for one box, but it's, you know, it's, six of one half a dozen it's kind of the same thing and it's not um, required at this point no but uh, just so everyone understands there there's no doubt in my mind i mean obviously i'm biased i created the software but i mean if you think about this from a business standpoint this costs amazon absolutely no money it saves them millions of dollars a year of lost inventory and it gets products in and received and selling faster, which makes them more money. So on every end of this, Amazon is making almost a lot more money without having to spend a penny. And I mean, I'll put it this way, during Q4, like I remember like December 5th or 6th, you know, I mean, at the height of selling at Q4, most of my inventory goes to AVP, which is a distribution warehouse in Pennsylvania. And that typically takes like days, you know, they get it, they sort it. My my products were going live in like 24 hours, you know, like 36 hours, like live and sold. Like I was getting uh, shipments picked up Friday at seven and by Sunday, like early afternoon, they were being sold. Like it was done. And that was, there's no doubt in my mind that was because of Packlist. I could see how much faster my products, you know, get into inventory and are sold. Right, yeah. Uh, a lot of people, uh told me that, that had taken advantage of that, uh, you know, program in the beginning. So, um, you know, it's definitely needed. It's definitely a tool that, um, uh, you know, that we personally need because I know we were wasting, uh, I don't know how many hours, but a lot of hours a week uh, dealing with this because we send, you know, big shipments. 
Yeah, I, I mean, especially like the export, and there's no. What, what drove us nuts is while we were developing this, there's no rhyme or reason for the expiration dates. You know, originally I was trying to get around downloading the pack list and just download an SKU list where there's no expiration dates. And I just assumed, which was stupid of me, that like all grocery items only need expiration. But like as you download the pack list, you have like random shampoos and soaps and, you know, and then some of them do and some of them don't. And like, and again, some food items aren't even in grocery and they need expiration. And it's, so like that pack list, like will, will save you, you know, will specifically tell you what you, needs to be done, you know, prepped or expiration. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, according to Amazon and every time I've asked, um, I'm not sure that they actually have it in writing yet, but I know they will soon. But uh, their idea is that everything that goes on you or in you uh, should have an expiration date. So obviously every, they're not requiring it of everything in the specific categories, beauty, health, and grocery. But, um, you know, as they find those items that have whatever ingredients are setting it off, then, you know, they're adding it to those products. But I expect, you know, every shampoo, every, um, every almost everything in all those categories are eventually going to require expiration dates. And, you know, the manufacturers aren't doing it. I mean, we're, you know, having a hard time, you know, especially with some of our clients that, you know, they call the manufacturer and they're saying that, you know, um, like, uh, I don't remember what it was, but one of those artificial sugars, they called the manufacturer and they said, this product doesn't have an expiration date, but Amazon's requiring it. So, you know, at that point, I guess you just have to make something up. Um, but usually the manufacturers will tell you, but they're not putting them on the, on the products. Yes, yeah, correct. Um, there are some questions. Let me see. Um, I think we've I covered to, everything else. Uh, uh, Shirley asked, so if I use Seller Central to add products, do I have to re-enter the SKU info into the app? No, our app will, will literally pulls, once you create a shipment, it pulls all the data in. The only thing you need to put in is the pack list which i'll go over in a little and you know once we get through this i'll show everyone more or less the step-by-step -step of what you need to do to uh just upload the pack list which literally takes like five seconds to do it's not like a, a big ordeal at all um, okay and barry wanted to know uh why you said you had to clean out the shipments when you first start because there will be shipments already there um, and can you show how that's done? Okay. Well, as far as cleaning out the shipments, you just literally find your, the, the shipments that show up and go into Seller Central, and you're going to have to locate them and just flip the status to completed. You know, because our app specifically only looks for work in progress shipments because those are the only working shipments. Um, and, and I can kind of like, uh, when, when I get into Seller Central later, I can just go over that a little further. Just Did you guys point. see, I don't, I'm, unless I missed it, Yancey's question about um, changing the number up or down after listing as he packs, is that um, changeable? Is that automatically uh, pulled in from Seller Central? Your total okay, so, amount of units? So um, the pack list is, is very, very finicky. I mean, like literally if you have a, like when we were doing tests, if we had like a, a period, an extra period or a space in there, it would reject. So if, so this is what the, the workflow is, is if you're packing, let's say you have a, uh, a shipment of 300 units, whatever, multiple, let's just go with 10 SKUs and 300 units, right? As you're packing it, you realize, okay, well, one's got a bad expiration date or one's damaged, right? So you're going to put those to the side. But what you need to do is you need to actually go back into Seller Central and modify the units. And that's because with Amazon, if your pack list does not specifically match exactly the number of SKUs and the number of units, then it's going to reject. It's going to say there's, there's something missing or something not there or something that should be there. And that's, again, it's, it's really, it's not a complicated thing, but it's just something that people need to be aware of. Now, if you want to get around that and just print out QR codes, you can, but uh, I, I, I still uh, feel that, getting everything as accurate as possible is the best way. Cause once you have a shipment with a few units off, I mean, that could hold up your whole shipment for a day, you know, as Amazon tries to reconcile it.
Great. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's really on Amazon's side. It has nothing to do with the app. Yeah, Amazon, like, they're, they're you know, I mean, again, I love Amazon for giving us this business, but, like, a lot of their, their programming functions are, are very dated and it becomes very, you know, like, it, it's, it's hard to get a lot of the information you want. Like, you, you would assume you could get this, uh, all this data easily, and it's not. You know, like, again, they give it to you in the pack list. Um, you know, they give you the pack list with all the UPCs and the what needs polybagging and what expiration dates, but you can't get that in any other section. You can't, I mean, you, you could potentially look up a product and know if it needs polybagging, but you're never going to know if it needs the expiration date until like it's time to ship it. Okay. And uh, Pam was asking uh, if there's a free trial to test it and uh, yes, there is a seven-day uh, free trial. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a seven days free. You know, when you sign up, so we don't we don't charge you. You know, if you want to cancel at any point, you know, you're you're more than welcome to. Which I hope you don't. <laughs> I hope you like it. Um, so yeah, um, we don't have this for Windows yet. I'm sorry. It's uh, I, I'd have to see the growing need. Um, I'm going to move forward with the, the demo. And yeah, let's, uh, let's finish up the demo and then we'll answer everybody's questions. You may be answering them. Uh, okay. Um, okay, so when you're done entering all your boxes, you know, you'll have like three or four boxes here and then you're going to hit uh, submit and then it'll say the shipment stored successfully. And then what you're going to see, let me open up my browser. Um, So what you're going to see is this is like inside the browser when you log in and you would go to the download files. And if you click on your shipment ID, you'll see that you have all your boxes, weights, heights, you have everything, all the contents in box one, two, you'll have the expiration dates if they needed, the quantity. Um, and if you just back out of here, you can literally, you'll click on the PDF to download um desktop let's just save it you know this this will be your qr codes which we split on to um two you know two sheets you know just like the shipping labels for amazon or you can literally just click on your text file and you save it and i'll just i'll i'm gonna open this up in excel actually uh, Now, uh, the question I have here is, um, if you use the QR codes, you don't need the packing list, obviously. But uh, are there times when you need the packing list instead of the QR codes? If you have expiration dates, then you Well, you, you could still put, I mean, you could still put the add the expiration dates with the QR codes. You're just not going to know which ones you need. You know, that's, that's the issue. So, I mean, if you wanted to be on the safe side and go through like every single shampoo, but look, th this was probably, this might be something similar to you do, Sean. Like this was a, like a health and beauty liquidation with some grocery in it. Right. And so you could see like, look, I have a shampoo that doesn't need it. I have gum that does need it. Another shampoo that doesn't. Um, right. But when you're using the app, if you entered all your expiration dates, don't you enter the expiration dates through the app? Yeah, the, the expiration dates will show up on the... Um, so if you enter them in the app and then you can print a QR code, you don't need a packing list? Correct. You could do it, one or the other. It's all the same information. Okay. So there's, um, there's no reason that we would ever need... Uh, if we fill all the information out in the app, we would never need an actual packing list. We could always just print those QR codes and uh, slap the label on a box. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, we, I, I wanted to order, like, again, I was just thinking of the seller, like, what would I want if I had this app? And I was thinking, well, you know, it would be really cool to know which items needed polybagging. Because I, I specifically remember, like, some toys, like, um, oh, what were they? Like, the uh, those puppies that, that 
Coco. I don't, they had all these fruit food names to them. Something. There were these puppies that came in like these big pink uh, containers, you know, boxes that were clear. Um, for, for you know, I was selling them on Q4, and there was like four different variations, and one of them needed poly bagging for whatever reason. You know, like I would have never known that had I not downloaded like that pack list, you know, because the other three of them for whatever reason weren't required. It was the same toy. Right. So, so, but yeah, you, you essentially, you don't need to download anything. You know, if you know what needs a, a preparation and you know what needs, um, I'm sorry, if you know what needs preparation and you know what needs expiration, you can still create that pack list and, or the QR code either way. It just, by downloading it from Seller Central, you're guaranteed to like specifically know what they're looking for. Okay, that clears it up because I know there was a lot of people asking me about that. Yeah, I mean, we would use the QR codes because we just print labels anyway. So printing an extra label, you know, and uh, uh, and they're the same as the printing labels. We can use those. Uh, I mean, they're the same size, like the UPS labels. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I we set it up so it would be the two up on uh, eight and a half by eleven. Right. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's perfect. So when we print the other labels, we can print these and you know slap them on the boxes. And um, I mean, you know, for us that would be a lot easier. Yeah, like whatever. It, it just you know, there's everyone sells something different. Everyone's got a different operation. There's no you know like what may what may work for one person, you know, might be very cumbersome for another. Um, oh, so let me just, so I'll go into Seller Central. Let me, um, so I could just show you where to download if anyone was going to. Um, so, um, so like you're in Seller Central. Now, one is, is you don't have to link whatever the, the pack list that you download, you don't need to link it. Like our software automatically you know, based on what's the contents of the file with the, with the shipment ID automatically link it to the shipment. So it's not something you, it's, we're trying to take as much out work, trying to take as much work out on the end user as possible. Um, so to download the pack list, what we do is you just click on your uh, work on the shipment. Uh, make sure you have more than one SKU per box. Make sure it's set to upload file. And again, I just make up a number of boxes at this point. Because right now, our, our pack list will override everything. Right now, the goal is just to download it. So you would just go to download pack list template and, uh, you know, it'd save it. And then, did I lose my page? Sorry. Oh, there we go. Okay. So then you would just go to upload product files, click to add file and go over and then just hit start upload, upload, and then it's done. All the information will be in your app. And you can just keep going over. So like I said, like what happens is, is if you, um, let's just say like one of these shampoos were damaged and you had to put 14 in, you would just change the units and then re-download the pack list. So, so that way the SKU and the quantity matched. Um, okay, so um, Barry wanted, uh, said he doesn't understand how it's saving time. Well, you, Barry, what you have to do is upload uh, these packing lists. Now, it's not required for everyone yet, um, you know, they're rolling it out in phases. So at some point, everybody's going to have to do this packing list. And that's what this tool does is it fills out all the information, gives you a completed packing list uh, to, uh, to send to Amazon. Um, yeah, I mean, that, if you, if you, if you haven't, them, oh, I'm sorry, go on, Sean. Okay, sorry. Um, you have to show them uh, what's exactly in each box. So if you're doing 10 boxes, you have to tell them what's in 
each individual box that you're sending and either print out a QR code or you have to uh, put that uh, packing list um, to Amazon. And Barry, just so you understand, prior to doing this, I'll, I'll even walk you through the process of what you had to do. So you would have to go to download this SKU shipment, just put it to the desktop. Then I'd have to go into Excel. Okay, so th and then this is the file Amazon gives me. So then you have to go into here and figure out how to format it nicely. You know, again, this all takes like a minute or two. And again, I'm not saying some people might be fine doing this. You know, it's not, you know, um, if you've ever tried printing anything off Excel, you know, it's like the information far outweighs the page size. So you need to get rid of what you need. You know, like, let's say, again, all this takes time. Um, we don't need this. You know, I would probably get rid of the ASIN and then this. And then you would have to print this out. You know, and look, and right now it's like garbage too. So like what I would do too is depending on how many boxes, you know, I would go to box one. And this is what I was doing during Q4. Box two, box three, and go over here. You know, so now I could kind of see, and then I have to change my page layout to landscape. And then even here, it's cut off on box three. Now, what if you have six boxes? There's no way that's all fitting in one page. Um, so I get rid of that. Okay, so now I have this. But again, even so, the titles aren't, you know, fit in. So if you go to wrap text, and it, look, I, I haven't even left the computer yet. I'm right now, I have to, this is what I literally had to do to, you know, print out a list. So at this stage, I have three pieces of paper that, uh, that I have to keep track of, you know, or, I mean, again, if you want to get creative, you can take the font size and make it smaller. And, but even still, so like I have two, so what this would print is two pieces of paper. I take these papers with me and then with one hand, I'd be marking with one hand, I'd be marking, okay, box one, I put 10 in here, you know, and I'd be writing this on a piece of paper and two in here and two in here, two in here. And then you'd have to make sure they all add up. And then you would take all this paper that you had and go back into the computer. And then you would literally like download, you'd go back into Seller Central, you know, write in your measurements. Or I think what I was doing on my list was like length, width, height, wait, you know, so I'd write this down here, transfer this into Seller Central, download the pack list, then open up the pack list, move all these contents over, save it, and then re-upload it. This is that. This is Amazon's process. And there's like, there's no, I mean, unless you did anything different, Sean, I'd, you know, this was as quick as I was able to do it. And then as you're filling it out, it's, you know, you're, 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 you're with the phone, you can, you could take your item, put it in the box with one hand, put the phone, tap it, put it back in your pocket or do whatever you want with it. You know, when you have paper and pencil, you got to lay the paper and pencil down somewhere, put it to the side. You know, you're losing the marker, you're losing the pencil. It's getting like crushed by packaging. It was just, it was like very, uh, <laughs> just not a fun process. Yeah, it's basically, uh, you know, what I said from the beginning, we, um, we were spending a, a lot of extra hours, uh, you know, we only ship once or twice a week, but, you know, still, I, I'd say, you know, it was taking a couple hours uh, to do it all uh, every time that we, we shipped. Uh, so, you know, anything to cut down on that is, uh, is definitely, um, you know, worth what you guys are charging. Oh, thank you. I mean, Barry, if, you, if you're comfortable with it, I mean, some people can do this, you know, and are fine with doing this, and that's, you know, that's great, you know. Um, but, you know, I, I personally, I mean, at the bare minimum, if you're doing, let's just go with you're doing two shipments a week, and this thing's saving you even five or ten minutes per shipment, right? 
you know, that's, that's an hour of your time a month. I mean, that, and that's going bare minimum. I think most sellers are doing a lot more than that. You know, and that's a small shipment. I, I think $15 easily outweighs like the hour you're spending doing it. Okay, great. Um, so uh, are there any other questions? Um, yes. Uh, you would uh, load the info as you're loading the box. I think Tina asked if you didn't uh, follow that. Um, QR codes can be printed on labels using our Dymo printer. I probably wouldn't print them on a label that small. You know, if you're using a 4XL or, you know, a bigger uh, printer, um, we print them on a laser printer. So, uh, you know, we print them on the same size as, uh, you know, our UPS labels are going on. Um, you know, but I wouldn't trust something, you know, an inch and a half or only two inches wide, uh, you know, for a QR code. Yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, if, you, if you're going to, yes, go on, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't think anyone was talking. Oh, uh, I see Shirley asked the question, so will the app auto-convert to Excel and do I have to have Excel? No, you don't need anything with this. Excel is just showing you, it is taking, uh, this is, all this is is a text file. It's tab delimited, which means that there's like a, a, a tab in between each column. And that's just how Amazon reads it. Excel just happens to be the best application, you know, to kind of view that in. But you don't need to open Excel. You don't need to do any of that stuff. You just, you literally put the info in the phone. You have the pack list and you just upload it into Seller Central. You don't have to touch another software or do anything else. Awesome. Um, okay, so uh, I think that covers all the questions. Uh, Valerie, did you have any other questions? No, I think everything that I kind of wanted uh, that I had questions on is already covered. Yeah, you know, we're working. We're we're. Uh, I think we're going to throw in a scanner function as well for people that just you know, like if you just want to scan it and pop it in. I, I personally think it might be more time consuming, but it really depends on your shipment size. So that's probably a feature that'll. I would say probably another week, week and a half, maybe. You know, we do a lot of big, um, you know, big shipments for our business. You know, a lot of times we're sending a thousand or more items, uh, you know, per week. So, um, you know, definitely probably more than what uh, some other people are doing. Um, uh, they have a lot of videos um, that they've done a whole video walkthrough setting up, which will be released within the next couple of hours, um, Barry. Uh, you know, so, you know, you have a seven day free trial, you know, it's not gonna cost you anything to try it out. Uh, so, you know, if you already have a system in place, then give it a try and see if this one's any better. Uh, you know, like I always say, you know, try whatever works out for you. Um, you know, try everything. Uh, you know, I like scan power. Some people like inventory lab, you know, it's, accessing the same data as whatever interface works better for you. And if you think you can do it uh, easier in Excel, you know, give it a try for a week. And if it doesn't work out, cancel your subscription. Um, you know, but anything we can do uh, to save time for our business, then, uh, you know, that's definitely uh, something we're looking for because you really, you can't get your time back. Uh, you know, it's the only thing that uh, you can't buy and, uh, you know, once you spend it, you can't get it back. And uh, I know I'm, uh, you know, always uh, short on time. And, um, you know, I'm sure you are too. Because even if you're saving a couple hours a week, uh, that's a couple hours that, uh, you know, you could have spent sourcing or, you know, working on your business in another way. You know, I definitely don't want to be uh, entering expiration dates and spreadsheets, uh, you know, without finding new products to sell. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're really open to user. I, I want to know like, you know, people's experience with this. I want to make this as like useful as possible. Like uh, I was just talking to a user this morning and he made a suggestion and I thought it was a good suggestion and it's something I think we can implement, you know, so we're, we're all open to like anything that can make this app better, you know, or features you guys are looking for, you know, this is not like a, 
dictatorship or anything. I just I want to create a great product that everyone could use. You know, once those um, or not I, but Brandon and I want to create a really great product. I want people to know that you know we put a lot of time and energy and quality behind this to really try and save you time. That's what it boils down to, too. How valuable is your time? And it doesn't hurt to try it out if it doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work for you. But if it does, um, you know, focusing on the more important money-making aspects of your business is, is obviously any, it should be anybody's goal. So, um, you know, if it doesn't work for you, you feel something could be better than, than you know, message Michael or Brendan, and hopefully they'll take that into consideration. But um, I think it was a great tutorial, Michael. Thank you so much. Oh, great. Thank you so much for having us. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you.